Okay, so this is uh, number 17 on assignment 10.5, and the data though also actually comes from section 10.3, number 15. So you have to look back a couple sections to get the data. And it's, uh, what it is, it's they've, they've chosen six people, and they've um, asked them how many years they've been out of college. Like this person's been out of college one year. Then they look at how much of a contribution they, they give back to their college. You'll find out after you get out of college that um, the college will be calling you every year asking you for money. I think pretty much all colleges do that. They ask for donations. So this person gave $500. This person who's been out of college five years gave $100. This person who's been out of college three years gave $300, etc. So we got n equals six. We got six people here. So what you can do is put that data into the lists on your calculator. If you push stat enter, you can enter the data. Okay. Once you get the data there, I'm going to push second quit. I can push stat, and I'm using a TI-84 plus calculator. Go over to calculate, go down to choice 8, which is linear regression, and it's going into list 1, comma, list 2. And that gives you the regression equation. There's A, that's our y-intercept. There's B, that's our slope. So I've got the equation up here. Okay, so that's how I got that equation off my calculator. There's the R value. That tells you how, um, whether there's a positive, strong positive linear relationship, a strong negative linear relationship, or no linear relationship. We're not going to take the time right now to go through finding the critical values and everything, but we're going to go with a strong negative linear relationship here to finish the problem. But I haven't actually checked that to make sure, um, but I want to demonstrate how to do the rest of the problem. So we're going to go ahead and assume that's a strong negative linear relationship. If you square it, that's your R squared. Um, that's something else that we talked about a little bit yesterday. That's called the uh, coefficient of determination. But, okay, um, once you get that value, what you want to do is you want to know what values the equation predicts people should give. So I plug, I want to plug all these x values into that equation up there. So I could do them one at a time. I could plug one in for x up in the equation and get 402.74, then I can plug 5 in, etc. But the lot quicker way to do it is to go to your list, stat, enter, go over to list 3, and type in the, get on top of your L3, type in the equation, 453.176 plus negative 50.439. Now, I don't want to just plug one X in, I want to plug them all in. So I'm going to, all my X's are in list one. So right here I'm going to put L1, second one. So that's all the predicted um, values. So a person that's been out of, for five years, it's predicted that person would give $200.98 back to the college. But in actuality, that person only gave $100. Next, we want to find the difference between these two. We want to take our Y values minus our y primes. y primes are your predicted values, and subtract them. So you go over to L4, you take list 2 minus list 3 to get all those, they're called residuals. The difference between the actual y value and the predicted y value is called the residual. So I go second 2 minus second 3. So that's just the difference between these, like 100 minus 200.98, negative 101. Well, some of those numbers, like, how would you get in negative 50? Yeah, you're, you're correct. Right here, that doesn't really make sense. To the equation's predicting that a person would give a negative amount. Okay, so it's probably you know sometimes the equation doesn't give an accurate prediction, and this would be a good example right there. Okay, that's not really something that would make sense. That'd be like the college giving you fifty-one dollars for getting out of their college. <laughs> they might want to for some people, but probably not actually going to happen. Okay, then I go over to list five and I square that number. Take that number squared. So I go up here and I go list four squared. So second, four, squared. And I'm going to add all those values up. I'm going to take the sum of list five. So I'm going to do sum as second stat. Go over to math. Get out a sum. And then second five. That's the sum of list five. So what that is, like let's say I look at one of my data points, an actual amount that was given. Here's the prediction line. The difference between those two, if I take my actual y and subtract my predicted y, I get my residual, which was this column. y minus y prime is this distance. When I square it, 
I take this distance times this distance, I get the area of that little square. When I add them up, I get the area of all those little squares. And there'd actually be six squares up there. I don't have them all drawn, but there'd be six little squares up here. If you add up all those areas, you get this number right here, off, which I just showed. $35,511 and about 32 cents. The reason we're, we're getting that is because it's going to be used in this next formula. Number 17 asks you to find the standard error of the estimate. Basically, it's the standard deviation of how far these numbers are off. Okay, there's, you know, we've got some error here. The standard deviation of how much, how far these red numbers are off of the black numbers is this formula. So I put the number in here. Mr. Schroeder. Yep. Where did you get uh, 31,758 again? 31,000. It's like the y minus y1. Is that where, where did that come from? Inch. Where are you looking at? Yeah, in the formula up there? 35,000? Yes. No, the one on the right. That one? Yes. That's the decimal. Oh. That's the rest of this decimal. Okay. okay. So now I'm going to divide that by 6 minus 2. N is 6. We have 6 people in the sample. Minus 2, that'd be 4. So I'll divide by 4. And I'll take the square root. And I get $94.22 as my standard error of the estimate. So that's the answer to 17, right there. Now for 21, it asks you to do a prediction interval. I'm not to find the 90% prediction interval when x is four years. Okay? Here's the big equation you use for prediction interval. Y prime would be the predicted amount for four years. So what you do is you plug four in for x in this equation. Calculate that number, it comes out to $251.42. Plus or minus. Now you go to your T chart. Um, N is 6. Degrees of freedom would be 6 minus 2 or 4. So you'd go on your T chart, you look, degrees of freedom of 4, you look at 90%, you look up this number on your T chart 2.132. Then you take your standard error of your estimate, which you got up here in number 17. It goes right there. Then I'm going to use this part of the formula. This is probably the toughest part to get typed in. Now, to get your x bar, you, you could just add up your x's and divide by 6. That's your average. Um, the sum of your x's, you could just add up your x's. The sum of your x squared, you could square these and add them up. But the quicker way to do that is to use your calculator. One of the things you'll need to know for the Chapter 10 test is how to do this. Stat, right arrow, I'm going to go two variable statistics. Enter, enter. There's my x bar. There's my sum of my x's. There's the sum of x squares. So that's where I'm getting a lot of these numbers. Like x bar, 5.333 came from here. Sum of my x's is 32. It's right there. Sum of my x squared is 220. And that's just going to use L1 and L2, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I could have put L1, comma L2 here if I wanted. But if I wanted list 3 and 4, I'd have to put L3, comma L4. Okay. Okay. And really, you could have done one variable statistics because you're really only using x's here. But there are some places on the test where you're going to want to know the sum of the y's and those types of things. So I would just get used to using that screen. Okay? So now it's just a matter of getting all this typed in here, which could be the toughest part. So I'm going to type in this numerator here first. Right under here, 6, parenthesis, 4 minus 4. 5.333 parenthesis squared. Then I'm going to divide by the denominator. I need to put this denominator in parentheses so it divides by the whole quantity. Parenthesis 6 times 220 minus 32 squared. Then I'm going to add the 1 sixth and the 1. So plus 1 divided by 6 plus 1. Then I'm going to take the square root. And so that black, this black piece right here, comes out to 1.0966. Okay. What is that? Um, I don't really have a meaning for you, but that's just that's just this quantity here. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to store it instead of trying to write it all down. I'm going to I'm going to store it. I'm going to say store. Store is right above your on button. Alpha A. So that's the 
that's stored in A. So this, this whole answer here is stored in A. So now I'm going to type in what I have over there, uh, 251.42. I'm going to use minus first, minus 2.132 times 94.222 times that answer, which was A, alpha A. I'm going to hit second enter and type in a plus instead of a minus in front of the t-score. And so I come up with this. The lower answer is, I'm going to go to the nearest penny, $31.12 is less than y, which is less than $471.72. So what we're saying is that if a person's been out of college for four years, we're 90% confident that they're going to give back to the college this amount of money, somewhere between $31.12, $471.72. Pretty wide range. Some people have been asking me, how come, they, how come these are giving such, a, giving such a wide range? Well, it's because our sample size is so small. When you only have a small sample size, um, when you have a small sample size, you're not going to be able to be real exact, okay? You know, if this was, if this was um, maybe 25 instead of 6, that would give us a smaller t-score, which would give us a little bit smaller interval. Stop the video now.